Thank you. All right. You know, I just met Sue today for the first time, and we share a brain because we're looking at this in very, very similar ways. So I want to talk to you about thinking like an improviser, the, the wonderful improviser that you are, but speaking like a customer, speaking it the language of your customer, right? So who, I'm going to actually do a little role play. Welcome to the, to the uh, role play section of the talk. Um, may I get a volunteer, a beautiful, lovely, thank you, sir. All right. And what is your name? Moonier. Oh, Moonier, I love it. Thank you, thank you. Let's hear it for Moonier. All right. So here is your assignment. You are in pain. You are coming to me, I am a doctor. So you, your objective is only one thing, to get me to give you medicine. That's, that's it, good, <laughs> then you know it. So go ahead, and I will, I will be, of course, the doctor. All right. Oh. Uh, we were playing Frisbee and I, I dived and, oh. and uh, hit the fence pole with my head and I'm kind of, Dizzy. It looks pretty bad. Yeah. It must really hurt a lot. It does. I bet you really need some relief, don't you? I think so, yeah. I think you do. Yeah. Well, before I give you some medicine, have a seat. I'm going to sit down and discuss tw for 20 minutes exactly how the medicine will work in your body. So this is how it's going to go. That All right. Hurts a lot. So, yes, I know. Bear with me. This is important. So, <laughs> there's palliative effects. Here's what happens we ingest it. The medicine, right, as it goes in, will go to our intestine, right? Well, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, not done with, I'm not done with my story. Hold on, I'll get there. Well, what happens is, is that as it starts to diffuse, right, and dissolve, 16% approximately, I could be wrong, or 17%, I forget which, from medical school, <laughs> will go to our brain. And then what happens is, it goes into our circulatory system, where the heart pumps it throughout the body. And this is where it gets really good. Oh, you don't look so good. We're almost done. Don't worry. I, I, I'm almost done. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God, my medical insurance. <laughs> oh, no. All right, fine. Here's the medicine. Here you go. Here you go. Now, Munir, are you going to put up with that? What would your response be if I was a doctor that did that to you? You'd probably punch me, and I would have that coming, and enjoy it, right? Because while well, I'm giving him the medical jargon Tourette's syndrome, he is about ready to fall over in absolute pain. And I, I would posit to each one of you that when we have to explain how everything works when our clients and our customers are in pain and they have an urgent need and they need relief, we don't need to burden them with all our methodologies, all our processes. We don't have to get them to understand exactly how every brilliant delivery system will work. They're in pain, they have a need. And what they want from us is relief. As Sue said it, they have a problem, they want us to solve it. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. so generously played, and every industry has jargon. Absolutely, Sue was absolutely correct. Every industry does. We have jargon too. Now granted, we have fun jargon. Yes, and it's kind of fun. It's just a little fun and quirky, right? And it's fun, it's, it's acceptance, it's positive, but it's still jargon. I agree with that 100%. And we, when we burden our customers to understand how the process we're getting away from the results and the outcomes, which is what they really care about. Now, I'm standing in front of a room full of impro improvisers, mostly, right? Anybody new to improv? Pretty new, okay, yeah. Woohoo! Woo welcome! We're going to uh, teach you the secret handshake later. That's, uh, you know, you're on probation. Um, how many of you Notice that there's so many terms that we use, right? Collaborative ideation and ideationology, and it starts to sound like a fun IBM commercial that just makes you want to go, ah, people talk like that, right? What are some terms? Let's have some fun here, guys. What are some terms that you hear all the time? Group mind. Group mind. Group mind. 
Justification. Blocking. Status and status shift. Absolutely. Offer. Yes, and accept the offer. Don't deny. Hidden agenda. Absolutely. Yes. Initiation. Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Tilt. Lots of stuff. Lots of good stuff, but it's still jargon nonetheless. And again, I don't think we need to burden our customers with that. So what I want you to do, just I know you're improvisers, and I'm, we're going to play it up. I want you to turn to your neighbor, or if you want a triad, you can do that too. We're adaptable. I want you to take turns telling each other the methods you use. I want you to lay it on. I want you to use as much jargon as your little hearts want to. Tell each other about the processes and methods you use. Yeah, in your work. Yeah. Wait, go to town with jargon. Go to town. Okay, everybody. All right. All right. Okay. So hopefully you, you got to sort of get your jargon Tourette's out and sort of get, you know, get it out. Um, but you're improvisers. It's kind of, you know, you love the stuff. You know the stuff. You're very close to this stuff. Can you imagine, and we'll do another exercise in a minute, can you imagine from the perspective of your customer that doesn't know anything about processes and methodologies and is thinking, um, applied improv, do I have to perform? Does that mean I have to get up on stage? Oh my God, oh my God, now we've just scared them. And they're thinking, but you know what? I really have a business problem. I need you to help me increase the loyalty of my customers, retain customers, increase productivity, decrease absenteeism. Oh, that's right, we forgot to talk about that. We were too busy talking about yes and. <laughs> and it's fun. So let's not forget, as improvisers, to speak our customers' language. And what do they care about? Results. Results, outcomes. Speaking and outcomes is the most important thing we can do. If we want to spread applied improvisation, and we do, the more that we can speak the customers' language, the more that we're connecting with them. So, for example, if you're dealing with high-tech companies, and I came out of high-tech, so, um, I'm, an, I'm a weirdo that's actually left-brained and right-brained, so um, I'm one of those, I translate, I'm the human translator between engineering and like the PR people, it's like, no, 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 here's the translation, blue, 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 here's how it works. Um, we want to speak in outcomes. For example, if you're dealing with product people, applied improvisation can generate better, more viable ideas for commercialization in a shorter amount of time. Boom. You think that's going to grab attention? Absolutely and it's gonna cost them less time prototyping, right? If you're talking to marketing people, what do they care about? They want stories that they can use to attract and retain more customers, right? And increase customer loyalty. That's an important bottom line result that people care about. We can hang our hat on that. If we're in healthcare and we're dealing with healthcare customers, how many of you have worked with healthcare customers? What do they care about? What Patients, they want to have better outcomes for patients. Can applied improvisation deliver? You bet it can, right? It means better outcomes for patients. That means better outcomes for hospitals. Decreased liability rates for doctors. Bottom line results for hospitals. Absolutely, that is an important business result to talk about. So when we're thinking collaborative creativity, that's wonderful, that's the how. But it's really important to remember that that is just the methodology that gets us to the bottom line result, which is better business ideas that move the business forward. Right? So I want you to always think like an improviser, be adaptable, listen to the language your customer is using, and adopt that. If they're speaking in patient outcomes, speak in patient outcomes. The secret sauce is applied improvisation. So now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to your neighbor or your little triad, whatever you've established, whatever tribe, and I want you to actually talk about outcomes. I want you to tell the person next to you 
what outcomes you achieve for your customers. No methodology, you got, you got your yayas out. Outcomes only. Okay, everybody. All right. Okay. I'm a mom, so I know how to get really loud. <laughs> so how did that feel, speaking in outcomes? How did that feel compared to speaking in processes and methods? I'm sorry? Yeah, right. More relevant, great. Did anybody, you, you have, easy, okay, easy, because you're used to doing it. Well, maybe for some of you, you had to concentrate a little bit more. What do you think is more memorable for the customer? Yeah, you know it, this isn't for your benefit. What, when you talk in outcomes, you're leaving a footprint. It's about memorability for your customer. So you guys are all brilliant improvisers, we're adaptable, and part of our species is that we're, we are completely flexible. So I really want you to remember this. The next time you're dealing with customers, ask them what success looks like for them in a business way. What is that business result? Reflect that back to them. Improv is a beautiful tool, folks. It's in your toolbox. But I want you to really think like an improviser, but always speak like a customer. And that's how we're going to increase the, the sort of adoption of applied improvisation. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks.